That is a great question. I can spend at least 20 lectures talking about that. I have done that in a course before. Look, the without if you planets and stars are part of the universe. In order to make planets and stars, you have to have a universe first. So that's wonderful. Now all the physical laws, the physical conditions were presumably set at the Big Bang. That was the moment of creation. So this is when physical law began. This is when time began. And as I said before, the Big Bang makes hydrogen and helium. And the, so the early universe can be thought of as being filled with radiation, light, um, and then some smattering of particles hydrogen and helium. As the universe expands, it's cool. Now, early in the universe, most of the energy was in the form of light, was in the form of radiation. So when God said, let there be light, she wasn't kidding. That's exactly what there was early in the universe. Most of the energy was in light. As the universe continues to expand, though, there's much less light energy, and there's much more energy associated with normal matter. When the universe cools to temperatures of, say, a few thousand degrees, that matter can combine, the electrons and protons can combine and make hydrogen and helium atoms. And now you have stuff that's kind of like normal gas clouds that we see in space. Those gas clouds then are floating around under the influence of their own gravity and they can condense. So the gravity can pull little bits of them together. The, think of these clouds as very turbulent. Those gas clouds will have, sometimes will have extra little lumps just by accident. We can see those early little lumps in the very small irregularities in the cosmic microwave background. These are the things that will then condense into galaxies. And within those galaxies, smaller little lumps will condense into stars. So the idea is you start off with this homogeneous soup with just a little bit of turbulence, with just a little bit of irregularity in, in, in it. Those irregularities will make little overdense regions. And in those overdense regions, gravity will start to pull things together. As you get more material into these overdense regions, you get more gravity, it pulls more gas in, you get this runaway process, and you get this collapse. That happened once on scales that make entire galaxies. And then within those galaxies, it happens on smaller scales to make individual stars. And once you get a star, then planet formation is a, is a byproduct of star formation. It just happens as a, as a, as a kind of a consequence of the, the formation of stars. Planets will naturally form around stars. And there you go, you have the, the conditions for life, all from gravity and turbulence. When the stars form, they're condensing clouds of gas and dust. But there's another little wonderful law of physics called the conservation of angular momentum. And that is how things spin or orbit each other in a circular direction, and then the amount of that spin is, is constrained to be constant as the process continues. You've all seen this before in the end of the Olympics, ice skating. The figure skater starts off with her arms out or his arms out in a spin, and then the skater pulls his or her arms in, and they go faster and faster and faster. That happens as a star forms as well. As a star forms, as it condenses, it will start to spin up. There's a little bit of tiny spin just by accident, and that spin will get amplified as the gas collapsing toward the center of the star. It'll spin faster and faster and faster. And that process makes a disk around the star. It's a lot easier to go this way along the spin axis than this way, and so material will get trapped in a disk. You, we see these disks all the time in forming stars. That disk is the thing that turns into planets. That disk is filled with dust, and that dust gets cold, and the cold dust begins to stick together and make little particles about the size of a sand grain, and then the size of a pebble, and then the size of a boulder, and then the size of the house. All the while then, the gravity will continue to grow from that object, and it will begin to accumulate material from around it, and it grows and grows and grows until you reach the size of a planet. So planet formation is just an inevitable consequence of star formation. 